Okay, this is the last in the series on the Unit N2020. I'm going to show the tune-up procedure. I've got an oscilloscope up there connected to the transmission line, connected to the SWR meter, connected to a dummy load. So first, the tuning procedure. We're going to use the manual transmit button here and we're going to go to the tune position here. So we go to tune on the knob there. Over here on the right, we're making sure the carrier is right down to start off with. We go to uh, transmit. And there's a small output there on the crow, which can be seen to be 10 watts. This is controlled by that carrier control at the back, as can be seen. So we don't really know to go above 10 watts much. And we're looking here at the plate current, which is just over 100 milliamps. That's the ALC. We're not developing any ALC at these low power levels. Now you can either go to the uh, power meter here, or look at the crow, or look at that to peak the output. Let's look at the power meter. And I'll just turn the power down a little bit because I only want just over 10 watts. And we're, um, we're now peaking the drive for maximum output. And I'm bringing off the load. I've just turned the load control down to minimum there, fully meshed. And we're putting out about 20 watts at the moment. Now I want to dip the plate current, the famous dipping of the plate current. So I'm going to go back to plate current, which at the, about, at the moment is about 140 milliamps. As you can see there, there's the dip. And you must always tune for a dip on the plate current. And we would then bring the load in. But because the dynamic plate resistance of the output circuit changes depending on the amount of plate current you're drawing, we really can't adjust the load accurately until we're drawing the sort of plate current we would be drawing during full output. So now I, I can put this back into receive to give the finals a bit of a rest, but I've only been on low power. The thing is when you're in um, high power, you don't want to keep the finals running for more than about 10 seconds, especially if you're drawing excessive plate current. So we're still looking at cathode current here and we'll quickly go to the power setting. So I'm bringing the carrier control right down. We're going to transmit. I'm bringing the carrier level up until we're just un under 50 watts. Now I'm bringing the, the plate load in. This will change where the finals dip, as you can see. Something I forgot to show before is the ALC setting. So when we go into transmit, I've got ALC on the meter now, we're in transmit. And I'm bringing up the level here until the ALC just starts. It's just in that position there. Right, so back to cathode current, which is about 230 milliamps. And we've gone right off the oscilloscope screen here. I just reduced the vertical gain a bit. So we're just tuning tuning for maximum output here. And that's about 260 milliamps, and they don't like that. They like it to be 240 to 250. So, as you can see, I can easily adjust it to 240 to 250. And if you look up here on the power meter, so that's just under 10 watts, at 250 milliamps, that's 80 watts, and it'll go up to 90 when the ALC kicks in. So, it's close. Now I've just gone back to just under 10 watts of output and I'll go to um, SSB now because I wanted to show you 
with no drive what the standing current is. Now you'll see on the meter here we're on the green triangle, the red triangle lower is for when the radio is operated on 10 watts only but the green triangle is the one for full output and if um, that's 100 milliamps on that scale there so you're looking at um, no, 65, 70 milliamps of standing current for the two output tubes. Now the next thing to show you is the um, two-tone signal. So I've got a two-tone generator just there plugged into the microphone socket. So if we look up at the oscilloscope and I'm bringing up the mic gain, this is a bit of a tricky type of oscilloscope to, um, to trigger. Anyway, I hope you can see that okay. That'll do if I can stabilize it there. Okay, now the the ratio of um, peak to um, average output with a two-tone signal is two to one. So if I adjust that to 50 watts on the meter there, I'm just going to have to bring down the, the gain on the crow because it's going off the screen. So with, um, with 50 watts there, going back to the crow, that's now 100 watts PEP. Um, I'll show you what that reads on the meter in a minute. I'm trying to change several things here at once. So it's it's just getting to the point of distortion there, and that's just where the ALC will come in too if I go down here. It's just starting to kick up there when it goes above 50 watts. So that's 50 watts PEP, and I'll turn it down again so it's not to cook the finals. Now, so that's... Um, that CW via the tune mode, and I've showed you lower sideband, I'll show you AM as well, and I can even let you listen to AM. So for AM, they're saying that the current should be around 110 to 120 milliamps with the carrier control. So when we're using it in AM mode, we're using the carrier control to adjust the carrier level and the mic gain as usual but you're adjusting modulation percentage there too. So on the two-tone generator here, the homebrew two-tone and single-tone generator, I'm going back to single-tone. I've got a shortwave receiver on 7 megs running. And if you put out 100 watts PEP on sideband, you can put out 25 watts on AM, and the PEP of 25 watts AM is 100 watts. So... To my mind, I would adjust the carrier level to 25 watts. So, going over here, we go to AM, like so, and then we go over to the carrier control, this one, and also going to transmit, so, with everything turned down, there's the transmit mode, and I would I would adjust it for 25 well that's 20 or there it is and um, the cathode current back here is about 130 mils now I'll just tune into this carrier properly Bit scratchy there on the receiver. Now, if I turn up the um, the mic gain control here, <laughs> you can hear the uh, the tone coming up. And if you look at the crow, it's not a very bright crow. I'm sorry about that. And I'm just trying to trigger it. I actually gave it a bit more modulation, you could see it easier. Whoops, it's starting to peak there. That's what happens when you bump the carrier control. There we go. Probably get a few more. Gets rather loud after all. So that's how to adjust the radio for AM. And I'll let you hear some uh, single sideband reception next.
can't find it in Australia. It's worth twelve dollars something in American dollars. Comes out about twenty dollars Australian. And they want over forty bucks to get it here. There, over. Yeah, I'm trying to track down a place in Australia, but uh, nobody seems to want to carry spare parts. The mower's about 10 year old, so uh, I need to find somebody that's got an old one that's broken. Because it shouldn't be a part that wears. I still don't know how this one's got so damaged. Anyway, either that or I'll just wrap it in duct tape again. If I get serious, I'll fiberglass over the duct tape there, over. We call that Kiwi Ingenuity out here. I know I had before. We, uh, uh, Candor Sun, uh, I don't know what they call it, they can't be that's what they can. And, uh, you said there's very large flakes about, and, uh, I didn't say it to him, I'll say it now, they, uh, they don't float no sherry light. I've seen videos of them, mate, they do not float. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, right, that's what he was on about. 7-3, mate. Uh, Mike and Claude are both gone. BK3 Sports Car Racing, Claude Mike and Claude are both gone. BK3 Sports Car Racing, Claude Mike and Claude are both gone. Anyway, that's an example of the clarity of the receiver. It's not a good 40 metre antenna, it's better for 80 and there's not many people on, but it gives you an idea anyway. That now completes the series on the Unidan 2020. Thanks for watching.